Welcome back to Phase 6 Gaming. My name's Zach. And I'm Brad. And uh, in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little different. We've decided to take up Brian Allen of Wreck and Rules Back of the Binder Challenge number 2. So today we'll be bringing you a deck profile uh, that Brad and I have been working on for admittedly only a couple days because <laughs> we... we uh, I, I, I made this list and then forgot about it for about two months and then started playtesting a couple of days ago. <laughs> but uh, I think it's really solid. Uh, I really think that... Uh, I did, so for those of you who don't know, Sideswipe, uh, when you flip to this mode, this gets plus two attack until the end of turn for each character in your KO. So he's 2-11-1. Um, I am currently running a four wide deck, so... Whenever you flip to this mode, if all three of your characters are dead, uh, he will gain plus six attack for each each time you flip to this mode. Um, so there, there's some decks out there that are kind of gimmicky that will try to spam that out with like roll out and uh, start your engines and cards like that that uh, and showing off. But uh, I really didn't want to build just a gimmick deck, so I I am running obviously certain cards that help flip him, get his ability off, but it's not the main focus. Really the main focus of this deck is to try and survive in the metagame. So uh, I went with a blue cards deck. Alright, so aside from side swipe, we are also playing Cliff Jumper. Everyone knows we love Cliff Jumper. Yes. <laughs> I love Cliff Jumper. I love cars, period. So uh, I really wanted to jump in on this challenge as I didn't get to um, really hit the last challenge. Uh, dead end for the cliff jumper dead end draw mo or draw combo. Uh, uh, in this game, drawing is so important. Getting the cards, seeing the cards that you really want to play, to you know get your upgrades to deal more damage or just five attacks, stuff like that. Uh, so drawing is super important. Um, I don't play. I do play. A couple of cards that allow you to draw in the deck, but uh, the deck is more focused on um, control, um, untapping your cars, and getting some damage and pierce. Uh, and then lastly, to round off our characters, Raider Hyperdrive for a total of 25 stars, 8, 8, 5, and 4. Um, really this could be any four star car. Um, I only, I chose him because, uh, in bot mode he does have an extra defense over someone like, uh, Detour. Um, but really they're interchangeable. Um, so that is it for the characters. Uh, really the, what you're trying to do is wait until you draw enough to start comboing off with private sideswipe. Um, you're going to be swinging a lot with Raider Hyperdrive or Dead End. Uh, there's going to be cards in the deck. Give them tough. Uh, it's a blue heavy deck. Um, really, the only character you're really going to flip in the beginning is Dead End to uh, activate draws. Uh, you really want to get into, like, start your engines and uh, turbo boosters to really uh, maximize attacking with these two little characters until they die off and then sideswipe becomes stronger at that point mm -hmm. and by then you should have enough cards in your hand to really push that damage push that pierce all right so let's just hop into the main deck uh, let's start with uh, upgrades so we're gonna be running three energon axes um, it's a really solid damage pusher in blue decks uh, also, getting that pierce on your smaller characters, really solid. Especially in a blue deck, you're not seeing a lot of orange pips. We do have a couple, just because they are staples in most car builds. Uh, so, Energon X, we are going to be playing Unflitching Courage at 3 as well. Uh, so, can't be able to put on Decepticons, but you, you will be able to play it on your characters like Sideswipe and Cliff Jumper. Uh, really, uh, Bold 2 is useful only to see the black pips. Um, we have a pretty good mix of black-blue pips. So Bold 2, and then it's a black-blue as well. Um, 
we are playing only two copies of Handout Blaster. Um, normally, you know, maximize all your double pips. But in this deck, you're really, you're, you're going to draw literally half your deck by, I don't know, turn four or five. <laughs> uh, half your deck will pretty much be in your hand. Uh, so you really don't want to have, like, these dead cards. Um, Handout Blaster is not terrible. Gives you bold. Get to see more pierce as well. Um, we're also playing two RR Disruptor Blades. Uh, again, plus three attack. Uh, gives you extra black icons to flip for pierce. Really pushing that pierce, pushing that uh, attack upgrades as well. And lastly, to round off our weapons, one single copy of Laser Cutlass. Um, surprisingly, Dead End and Hyperdrive will both last a pretty good, um, long while if you are untapping them correctly, um, and playing, uh, your tough cards on top of them. Dead End already has tough one in car mode. Um, so putting, like, a Smoke Cloak or something, or, or uh, even Terrifying Resilience. Uh, really, really bolsters him, allows him to continuously swing and swing and swing. Uh, um, and you're gonna you're gonna see your untaps. You're gonna see all your cards that you want, really. Uh, so I don't maximize every card out, just for the fact that I can pretty much draw into whatever I need. That rounds out for all of the weapons. Next, we'll move on to armors. Uh, we are going to be running one, two three copies of extra padding. Um, I didn't really care for this card, honestly, when I first started uh, seeing it played, but uh, I've really grown to like it in blue decks. Um, I'm more of an aggro player myself, but uh, recently I've been playing a lot more blue. And extra padding is just great. Uh, you can pick it up off of flips. You, uh, you spread it out. Yeah, you can spread it out if you needed to. Um, I generally try to put at least two on one character. Uh, especially putting on, on uh, Sideswipe. I generally put all three on Sideswipe just to make sure he survives as long as possible. Uh, so I'll put all three on him. Sometimes I'll put like a a point position uh, on one of the smaller characters, swing with Sideswipe while they're already tapped, and then they're forced to swing into one of the smaller characters. And in case they can get rid of this, then he's also got the tough as well. So. Uh, so three extra padding, one, two, three smoke cloaks. Um, so the tough one does actually come up quite a bit. Um, you'll be surprised. I mean, you're already playing a blue deck. There's five whites. Um, so flipping on defense, uh, you're getting pretty good defense already. And then the tough one could potentially give you net you you know one to four to five extra. Pips, I mean, if, on max, like if you flip a white and double blues as well. But, uh, <clears throat> uh, so I, I max these out. They have blue, blue, black pips, more pierce. Um, and then to round out the armors, I play one terrifying resilience. Um, I only play this at one. I don't want to see too many orange pips in the deck. Uh, when you flip it for an attack, I guess it's all right. But, uh, it's got black pip. Really, the main thing is when you draw into this, it's tough to on either dead end or hyperdrive, uh, just allowing them to last longer. Like with all these cars in this deck, um, just being able to start your engines and turbo boosts. And uh, when I was playtesting this against Brad, I was constantly, every game, being able to see multiple, multiple untaps. Like just turn three, four, five, I was untapping every single turn. Uh, so that rounds it out for the armors. Uh, next, we'll move on to utilities. So one, two, three turbo boosters. It is a must in the deck, obviously. It's cars. You want to see untaps. Um, no need to explain why that's good. Um, second utility is point position. Um, really, really love this card in this deck. Uh, you really do want to keep like cliff jumper and sideswipe alive until the very end. Uh, you want your, you want to be swinging with your dead end and your hyperdrive as long as possible, um, and then when you're ready to swing in with sideswipe, 
having this point position on either of these characters tapped uh, just really helps protect him. Also forces them to swing into this card, and if one of them KOs, then your um, Sideswipe will untap by him via his effect. Okay, and that is all of the utilities I play. Um, and we'll move on to actions. Uh, we play two escape routes, um, really solid card. It is two of our five white pips, uh, but they also have green pips, so flipping them on attack or defense, uh, you're able to swap out a card from your hand. You'll have plenty, plenty of cards to choose from. Um, it's very, very draw heavy deck. Um, you'll see why in, on the next card. But uh, escape route, flip one of your characters from bot mode to alt mode, and this is one of those cards that you're gonna use to really uh, cheese out his effect. So say he's in bot mode, you escape route, flip him to alt mode, uh, and then he'll get his ability off. <clears throat> or vice versa. So, so if you already in this mode, flip for turn, escape route, get his ability off. Alright, so next we play three equipment enthusiasts. So this is um, a main your main draw engine, um, aside from Cliff Jumper, who's every time you flip your bot uh, from car to bot mode, you will be drawing at least one. If you flip dead end, you'll draw two. Uh, then equipment enthusiast, um, I was able to get uh, quite a few, especially with like extra paddings. Being able to play three extra paddings in one turn and then play equipment enthusiast right after, that's a net draw of like three cards right there. So <clears throat> super solid, super solid card. Uh, that is it for the white pips uh, of the deck, and then we'll move on to uh, the rest of our actions. So, triple copies of Start Your Engine. Um, again, another one of those must-have in a card deck. Like, super great, super great card. Uh, combine that with our next card, uh, Brainstorm, with an escape route. You can cheese a lot of flips with sideswipe. Uh, next is um, some damage in the deck. Um, we have a limited number of upgrades. Uh, so I play two steady shots and two the bigger they are. Uh, steady shot, blue black pip, good for the pierce. Um, gives one of your characters plus two attack. Again, uh, being able to brainstorm, steady shot, plus I don't know, start your engine or any other action to really just uh, combo off, get that extra attack on there just in case you need it. Um, really, really solid card. And then the bigger they are, um, the highest character card you have is eight stars. A um, lot of meta decks right now playing big, big star characters uh, like Shockwave, uh, Galaxy Prime, all those big characters and this is a really good way to deal with that being able to swing like <laughs> your hyperdrive with a uh, five pierce four just from this one card it's pretty pretty awesome just to be able to get that damage out or okay and then lastly in the deck main deck we play uh, three security checkpoints um, originally I was playing only two uh, Brad convinced me to play the third one um, Instead of a handheld blaster. Yeah, instead of a... So I was playing three handheld blasters and uh, only two security checkpoints. Honestly, I was drawing so much that I just didn't feel like I wanted to security checkpoint myself. And I felt like I was getting hurt more than my opponent was. But um, I think you really need this with uh, OA being a thing. Um, there's many, many builds of OA that are pretty effective and can be utilized in, in different decks. Uh, so... Having security checkpoint just to be able to uh, get uh, cards out of your opponent's hand for their combos. Um, maybe you you play disarm, and uh, we'll go and get that and get to that in a second. But um, maybe you uh, play disarm brain or brainstorm disarm security checkpoint. Uh, so you disarm their galaxy prime, get all their 
all of his, you know, 20 upgrades off of his character <laughs> into their hand, and then you security checkpoint them uh, to make them discard them all. Um, so, uh, I also made a side deck for the deck. Uh, we'll start with the side character. Um, Wheeljack. Uh, Wheeljack is just uh, another really solid card. Uh, so when, when, yeah, whenever one of your cards uh, is upgraded, you draw a card, then scrap a card from your hand. So another draw card, or draw uh, ability. Okay. Uh, yeah, slash filter, so you can filter something out of your hand that's dead. Um, and then uh, when you have a weapon in your scrap pile, this has bold three, like, super solid. Um, he's got five base attack. Give that, give him a weapon. Say like, uh, Energon Axe. Uh, Energon Axe plus a weapon engrave. What well, doesn't matter. And, and then you're also playing a good number of fierce cards. So then he's got bold three. So flipping, you get eight attack. Flip a bunch of pierce. Be able to pierce them as well. Plus the base base two pierce off of Energon Axe. Super solid combo. Um, the rest of our side deck, uh, oh, so, uh, what we side out, obviously we side out a dead end and a hyperdrive, which, uh, nine stars, trade out for a nine star character, and then wheeljack just works perfectly with other cars as well, so. Uh, Starting off with weapons in the side, we are riding two thermal weaponries. Shout out to uh, Joe <laughs> from Wreck and Roll. Loves this card. Um, playing a blue deck, being able to turn all of your flips into Pierce, especially with you know Wheeljack getting pulled three off of his ability, being able to basically turn his entire attack into Pierce. Um, we also play the one copy of Battlefield Scan. Um, seeing a number of decks play Tailwind, Tailwind, and um, the all, those, all those airstrike patrol cards. Um, being able to turn off their stealth is really strong. Um, I think the point position is also another card that might see a lot of play as well. Um, being able to make a character the focal point of your opponent's attacks, being able to basically make them, or choose what they're attacking, super strong. And then, uh, so this could help negate that sort of play. Um, playing two espionage. Um, this is just a really, really solid card for um, removal. Uh, especially like, so you're playing against OA. Your opponent has a, a picked up OA last turn. You know that maybe next turn they're probably gonna get it off. Play espionage, make them discard it. Um, really, anything, anything that you know your opponent has that you really don't want to see them play, um, espionage. Espionage combined with disarm, another solid play as well. So we're running two disarm. Um, it's and just really just for, for removal, um, being able to take someone's utility packs off, you know. Reducing their health and all that solid card um, being able to get rid of a Weapon that's just wrecking your bots um, Another removal card vaporize um, uh, I run vaporize over say like smelt because while smelt you can pick up off of a flip uh, I really just like to be able to choose what I'm vapor or what I'm scrapping versus letting my opponent choose um, smell is really only good if like there's only one choice. <laughs> right. And with as much card draw as we have, we're going to get that vaporize in our hand. Yep. Again, like all this stuff, you, you, you're siding this stuff in, you are going to see it. You're going to see it off of flips. You're going to see it. So like for your green pips, you're going to see them off flips. For your other cards, you're going to draw li literally like half your deck if you play this right. And then lastly, to round off our side deck is stable cover. Um... Pierce is heavy in this deck, but it's also uh, just a really strong mechanic. Not a lot to shut it off, and uh, if you're playing uh, a blue heavy deck, you're normally safe unless your opponent is heavy Pierce. Then your blues 
flips do not matter at all. So being able to turn off your opponent's pierce. Um, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching everybody. If you liked our deck profile, please make sure to vote for us um, over on the Wreck and Rule slash Transformers community pages on Facebook. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one.